somebody agreeing with me in prayer that don't believe the way I believe. I said it last. I said, you know, we, I don't want I don't want people that don't are not believing. If they're doubting in any moment, don't even don't even pray with me. Amen. Just don't even agree. I'll agree by myself. I'll pray the prayer of faith. Amen. But I know there's power in agreement. And when you get people that can agree on one thing, the Bible says it shall be done. Amen. And today I want to talk to you about a word that I think we have maybe misinterpreted at times, but yet also led it into other things. But I want to help you today understand it and hopefully give you some insight. Maybe not. Maybe you know it, and that's great. But I'm going to remind you about it today, all right? There's a word called supplication. Anybody ever heard that word? Supplication. It sounds like a real spiritual word, and in the word in the Bible, it's in the Word of God 60 times, the word supplication. In the Old Testament, if you look at it, it means to humble yourself. If you look at it in the New Testament, it's talking about making requests. So when you take this word, supplication, it has so much different meaning across the board. But it also means what it means in the New Testament. Amen? And so when you grab it in the New Testament and you find this, this word, notice that it always goes with the word called petitioning or it goes with the word called request. We're used to hearing this. Back when I grew up in church, we had a moment in the service where we would stop and we would take prayer requests. Anybody remember that? Raise your hand. Boy, that's a bunch of you remember that. That's good. We used to do prayer requests, and that would go on for about 15 to 20 minutes and sometimes longer uh, because many times it turned from a prayer request to God. I mean, uh, uh, I didn't say gossip. That's what I meant. Uh, <laughs> went from prayer requests to, to talking about stuff that didn't really matter. Amen. How many has ever been around one of them prayer requests? Amen. I've been around plenty of it all my life. I was raised in it, brought up in it. I seen it. And we used to have testimony service, but them turned into complaint sessions. Amen. Talking how bad the devil is and not how good God is. The testimony was supposed to be testifying about God, not about what the other. Amen. And so we find so many times that these things that we grew up watching and the word supplication, the word petition, the word request brings so much back to my memory as I was raised in church. But I did a little study because I, I got really interested in this word supplication. So I'm going to just help you. I'll try not to spend, spend too much time or bore you with this. But I did a little study because in the King James Version, a lot of people see this, you know, King James Version when it was translated. There's a lot of things that take place in that translation. Our first English uh, given language there. But then we find New King James, we find all the other versions today. Amplified helps out a lot with a lot of things. But I also did a little more into the study of this word supplication. Where did it come from? And it came from a Latin term. The word meant to supply care. The word is supply care. If you hear supplication in a Latin term, it would be supply care. I don't know about you, but my God supplies all my needs. Amen. And when I hear this word supplication and I make requests known, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a giving God the request or the petition to take care of us. Amen? How many know that God wants to take care of his people? You, amen? David, uh, in Psalms, I'm going to just share with you a few things here before I get into the message. But David's psalm is filled with supplication. I only wrote a few down. But there's a, a part in Psalm 4 where he says, that he, he had supplication for mercy. There's also in Psalm 5 where he says he, he prayed a supplication for leading. He also, if you look at the Psalm 6 chapter, he talks about praying supplication. He prayed for deliverance. If you look on into the 7th chapter, and it just goes on and on, but the thing is, is he prayed for salvation from persecution. These requests that David was making in his day were very relevant. They were very culture, if you will. They were needed. And I don't know what all of the needs are in this building today is, but no matter what your need is, God said, if you'll bring your supplication to me, bring your petitions to me, I will answer those. Amen? And, and the word also in supplication in the Old Testament, we got, I got looking, and, and any time you heard the word supplication, it meant to kneel. 
It meant to kneel down and get before God. It meant to bow before Him. So when you hear that, that's part of that humbling part of this word that we don't want to leave out because I still believe that kneeling down, there's power in kneeling down. Amen? I think there's just something about it. I love standing. I love praising. I love even praying like this. I love when I can pray like this. But there's also something about when I get to kneel down and I can just spend time with God, just me and God, just kneeling down and talking to my Heavenly Father. Amen? Does anyone understand what it means to kneel down? Amen? Uh, there's this word petition that, that I, I already have said, but it means to make a request for something that you desire or, or looking at it as a request given to someone of superior power or authority, to those that are in a authority. The supplication prayer is not something you come. This is not the complaint box that God's got set up. This is the request box. Come on, amen? amen. And your request is you need a situation, whatever you're needing God to do, that is supplication. That is a request. That is a petition. How many of you here has ever signed a petition? Amen. Raise your hand if you ever signed a petition. We've all in here signed some kind of petition. You know what you were doing when you signed that petition? You were sending a request to someone in authority to, to upon your request, what you were saying in that, in that simple petition that may have said, I don't agree with this. It went to an authority that someone would look at it and go, hmm. Yeah, we need to look at this because we have a hundred signatures saying the same thing. You know what a petition is, right? Amen. So let's look at this on God's side. If I got a petition, I may have a hundred needs. Anybody? Amen. Anybody feel like it's a hundred needs? Yes. This list may be long, but it don't scare God. Bring your petition to the authority of all authority. Bring your petition to the most powerful one of all and take that request to him and believe that he can do what you are asking. Amen? Amen. And when we do these things, we find that God sends us answers. I used this scripture last week, but I want to use it again. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. It says, now this is the confidence that we have in him. How many have confidence in God? Amen. Boy, that was weak. How many have confidence in God? Yes. I, you know, most people have more confidence in man than they do God. And you say, well, I don't know because men have failed me. But it's amazing you still have confidence in man. I'll show you just a little bit. You will believe man over what God's word says. And many times we lose our confidence by listening to those things that are not of God. Amen. Amen. This confidence that we have in him is from this word that we read. The Bible says that if we ask anything, everybody say anything, according to his will. Well, what is God's will? God's will is to give you the best, the greatest, and, and the most awesome life because he said, I give you abundant life. Amen. Amen. Now, does that mean he's going to give you a million dollars? Some of you say yes, but some of you said no. And no is probably the correct answer because most of us can't be good enough with $10, much less a million. Come on, amen? Yeah. We can't even be faithful with what God does give us, much less expecting more. Come on, amen? Yeah. So we look at this and we see that if we ask anything according to his will, it is his will to heal. It is his will to deliver. It is his will that you not be uh, addicted to anything, Amen? It is his will for you to be free. It is his will that you uh, uh, live a life of fullness. It is his will that you have a good marriage. It is his will that you have blessed finances. It is his, are y'all with me in this building? Am I talking to the world? I said it is his will for you to have all these things. It is his will. It is his will. His word is his will. And you know what? If we ask anything according to his will... He hears it. Amen. He hears us. What's it telling me? If I ask anything according to his word, he hears us. If we know that he hears us, this is the big one. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have, look at it, the petition, the request, the supplication that we have asked of him. 
The things that you and I have requested, we can be confident in knowing that what we have requested, we can have. When we ask for those things, God is consistent with his word. You can ask for it, and you say, well, it's not coming. Maybe you need to, maybe you need to line your life up with the word of God. Amen. I'm preaching from the pulpit back, amen? amen. There are things I'm asking for that not come yet. I'm checking me, amen? I'm exam Lord, examine me. Somebody just say it, Lord, examine me. Because the thing is, is these requests according to his will, I've got to be living according to his will as well, amen? amen? I can't be living outside of the word and expecting God to do his word. I can't expect God to do something against his word. It won't happen. It won't work. It just won't work. I, I found this quote this week, and I just, man, I couldn't stop looking at it. The word is simply this. Quit studying the problem and start studying the promises. You spend more time studying the problem than you do the promise. Anybody? I'm going to talk a little bit some more, and I'll preach a little bit. I'm going to talk to you. How many of us study more about the problem than we do the promise? With it being quiet, I take that as most of us. Because all of us have a part of us that is flesh. And our flesh wants to study the problem because we want to fix it. We want to fix it. We want to fix the problem. We want to take over the problem. And we want to handle the problem. But the thing is, is the problem is not your problem. It's God's problem. Because I'm living according to the word of God. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm quoting the word of God. I'm believing the word of God. And with that, I'm studying the word of God. And with all that, I'm studying his promises. And he said it's his promises are yes. Amen. His promises are there. But we got to find them to stand on them. Come on, amen. amen. Philippians 4, 6, 7. I want to build this today from this scripture. It says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by notice what it says here by prayer everybody notice the next word prayer and supplication this is the prayer of supplication but there is prayer and supplication there is prayer and there is request are you hearing me this morning amen prayer and request with what with thanksgiving. He goes on and says, he said, he puts a comma there, he says, stop a minute and look. He said, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. I want you to really get this today because he said, be anxious for nothing. I don't know if you really understand what I'm saying. How many anxious people do I have? Because anxious people are those that want it now. Actually, there are those that want it yesterday. I really get truthful, they wanted it last week, amen? The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. The word anxious for nothing means do not worry. <laughs> How many know that's a big one in itself? Amen. Worrying causes a lack of trust in God's power. As believers, we need to realize that we need to have confidence and not worry. Mm -hmm. Boy, this is good. It's really quiet in here. I like it. <laughs> in life does not come from what you do, but from what God does. Amen. So many people say, well, if I could. No, if God does, then I will. Amen? Amen. It does not come from ourselves, but from the most powerful one of all, that is God. When I make requests to God, I'm not making a request to go try to fix what I just told God to do. Amen? Amen. What I just asked God to do, I said, God, this is my need. And if I go after and try to figure out how I'm going to do it, I'm 
told God I don't trust you, I'm going to do it myself. The thing is, is we, how many times have we made a request to God and yet tried to change it ourselves? This is being anxious. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. Ask God and kick back in your recliner and have a water. <laughs> have a water. Have, have just, a, just a relaxing snack, whatever that is for you, all right? Just sit back in your recliner and say, God, I'm just waiting on you. And many times you say, hey, Pastor, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do that. I'll tell you why you can't do it, because you're anxious. The Bible says to be not anxious for nothing. Do not worry. Just trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust me. Lean not to your own understanding. Trust me. Come on, has anybody heard that before? Acknowledge him in all his ways, and I will direct your path. Don't worry about what you do. I got it. There are people, church, we don't understand how important it is to let God do what God needs to do. Paul tells us not to worry about anything, anything. If we worry, we are basically saying that God cannot handle it. God cannot handle it. So I got it. God, I got this one. I got this one, God. I got it. You say, I don't ever say that, Pastor. Well, you do by your actions. And we all have by our actions. Come on. I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching with you this morning. Come on. Amen. Amen. We all have done this. We have prayed, and then we pick it up, and we go ahead and try to figure it out ourselves. If you made a request, and you made a supplication before God, and you made a petition before God, then ask him and trust him, and don't think about it until you get the victory. Come on. Amen. Amen. How many is how many going to do that today? <laughs> so y'all really asking me are you sure you ask what you're asking me amen I want, to, I want you to listen to this Jesus told his followers and we're going to read a, a passage of scripture here and I, I just want to get in and read it a little bit today can I just take my time today because I plan on it anyway Matthew 6 thank you Matthew 6 Matthew 6 chapter, starting with about the 25th verse here, it says, Therefore I say to you, this is Jesus, this is not Dwayne Driggers, this is Jesus. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. You know, it's amazing that we're so blessed with all this great things in our life. How many have clothes? Mm -hmm. But yet there are people today I know in many countries that don't have clothes. We are to be thankful. Come on. Mm -hmm. We find these things and we have food to eat. Thank God we got, we got water to drink and we got food to eat. There are people that do not have these things. Come on. Amen. amen. But I want you to see something. He said, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Boy, I, I know in my life that food's important. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah. How many like to eat? Come on, be real. How many like to eat in here? Come on, amen. Yes. Jesus just said, it's not, life, it's, li it's not life more than food and body more than clothing. I mean, ask a question. Is not life more than food and body and more than clothing? Well... <laughs> You ask us in America, Lord, we'd probably say, well, food is kind of important. Amen? Amen? This is not what he's saying. We're not asking for an answer. Verse 26, he's trying to make a point. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Mm -hmm. You say, no, I threw food out of the window, and I'm so glad you listened to God. I threw that fry down. God didn't do that. I'm so glad you listened to God. I'm, I'm glad you fed that bird. But I'm going to tell you, without you ever throwing anything down, God is providing food for the birds. Amen? Amen. He's providing food for them. He's taking care of them. It, the Bible teaches, he says, 
Look at the bird of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than the bird? Are you not more valuable than the birds? Look at your neighbor and say, are you more valuable than a bird? Verse 27 goes on to tell us. Verse 27 says, Which of you, which of you by wearing can add one cubit to your height? Nobody. I, 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 you know, I always wanted to be over six foot. All my family, besides my uncle and me and my mom and dad. We're the only short ones in the bunch. I always wanted to be over six foot. I always wanted to be over six foot. I played basketball and being five, I like to say, Five nine, just to push it, amen. <laughs> and and people say, no, you're five eight. I said, no, I'm five nine. Actually, five eight and a half, and a few more if you get to it. It all depends on what shoe I might have on. I put my wife's shoes on, I'd be six foot, amen. <laughs> just saying, amen. And I and yeah, I look funny walking around with that. But the thing is, is I could go to six foot easy, right? But I can sit around where I, I used to, as a kid, man, I wanted, to, I wanted to be so much taller. I, I heard people where they hang themselves up on the bars and they just hold themselves there and they're supposed to stretch their body or do something. It never worked, amen? I'm just going to tell you, it don't work. Don't try it. Don't even waste your time on it, amen? Just accept your height and learn to be content with it, amen? amen. I learned to be content with it by learning how to get around the big guys, amen? I, I like guys like Mark. He's just standing about, what, seven foot? <laughs> it looks seven foot to me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. The, the thing is, see, Mark, was, I played against guys about Mark's height, and I used to, I learned how to take them up and go under them and around them to be able to put the layup on them. And it, well, it used to frustrate them because I was 5'8". Now, now, you know, people like, people like my son, he, he's so much better basketball player than me. But, uh, but, but anyway, as, as I used to go out to and play a lot, and, and do those things. I used to. I used to love going around these guys because you get them up just in the right place. They're so, they're tall enough. They ain't gonna move back. Uh, short guys can slide under them, you know. <laughs> Climb under the mountain. Well, I use. The, you say, what's that got to do with the message? Well, I know. I'm asking. What am I gonna do with this message story? This story is this. I could sit around and worried about and worried and worried and worried about my height. And, and just said, well, I'm, I'm just no good. I'm just going to sit back and do nothing. No, I made what God gave me. I made the best out of it. Amen? Amen. I'm, I'm not in the pros, as you can tell. I didn't go to college for it. You can tell. I, I, didn't, I didn't do any of those things. But I love playing. I love playing the sport. I enjoyed it. I love the competition. You know what? The enemy is kind of like this. He wants us to get weary about our life and about how the things we don't have and the things somebody else has. And he gets our eyes on all these things that are going on and saying, well, if I had that or if I had this or if I had that or if I had that or if I looked like them or if I did this. No, it ain't about any of that. It's about who is in you and me and who is in control of our life. Amen. It is our life that God has given us. Amen. Be content with who. And what God has given you. Amen? Amen. Verse 28 goes on to tell us. And I'll get off my short kick. So why do you worry about clothing? Oh, now there's some, there's some people in here. Women. I, there's some men just like you too. Love to shop. Love clothes. How many in here love clothes? All the rest of you liars, raise your hand. Because <laughs> you're wearing something right now. If not, I'm going to be very concerned in here. Amen. <laughs> I, I know that you like clothing because you have clothing on. Amen. Consider, he said, the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Verse 29, it says, and yet I say to you that even Solomon. Do you understand how great Solomon was? Do you understand what he's saying here? Solomon had the most finest of all things. Come on. Amen. And Solomon, in all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Man, what a comparison that God gives. Amen? And verse 30, Jesus goes on to tell us here. He says, Now if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into an oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Verse 31 I'm reading a lot, and I want you to get it. Therefore, do not worry. Look at it. Let's say, do not worry. Do not worry. Say, what 
shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Verse 32. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. Do you understand what the scripture is telling us? There are people that seek after the, I'm just going to say it. We seek after more of the things of the world than we do of God. Our requests, most people's requests, are about things they can gain in this life. And that's not what the requests are for. Requests are for the needs. Yes, God will give us more. But we got to first learn to what we seek for. Because the Gentiles, they seek after clothing. They seek after food. They seek after all these things that life may give them. Nothing wrong with having things. Don't, don't get me wrong. But listen to me. When our life becomes so focused on seeking after those things, Jesus is telling us that this is how the Gentiles did it. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. It's like me, like me coming up saying, I need this. And Ansel already knew about it. You already knew I had a need. Already the need, you already knew about it. God already knows those things that we're in need of. But the Bible tells us we have not because we... And we don't ask because we don't believe. And we don't, we don't receive because we don't believe. We don't get because we doubt and we have fear and we worry and we get anxious and we want it now. We want a microwavable answer. And I believe God can do an immediate answer. I believe you can ask and receive all in the same moment. Amen? Amen. I believe it can happen. But does it always happen? No. And that's where faith comes in. That's where our faith's got to kick in. And verse 33 goes on here to tell us. He said, seek First, here's what he wants you seeking. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added to you. God didn't say he's taking all those things away from you because you don't deserve it. See, it is always taught that, that, that you know, to, to be in the ministry or to, to, be a, to be a believer, you had to be poor. That's not, that's not word. Amen. It's not poverty that makes you Christian. Poverty does not make you a believer. In fact, poverty keeps you from blessing others. Amen? Amen? Poverty is what is stricken by the enemy. Jesus said if you will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he said all these things shall be added unto you. I'll add food. I'll add clothing. I'll add all your needs because I know them all. Amen? Amen. But we go seeking after the wrong things. Come on. Amen? And many times we pray prayers that don't. We wonder why they don't get answered. But the Bible says we pray it amiss, which is mainly we pray for things like, Lord, I wish you'd kill them and get them out of my way. <laughs> you'd say, Pastor, people pray. You pray that. I didn't pray that. I said, I said people. I, I, don't, I didn't say you. I said people. The other church. But I want you to understand that there are people praying prayers that are hoping that someone else gets destroyed. That's not, that's not from God. Amen. Our prayer should be, Lord, save them. Lord, deliver them. Lord, set them free. God, I don't agree with where they're at. I don't agree with what they're doing. I don't agree with their sin. But God, you said I love them. And I'm praying, God, they come to repentance and find you, Jesus, as their Savior. Lord, that's what I'm praying. That's what I'm believing. Amen. I believe in the good things to come out of their life. Amen. God, don't answer amiss. Something that is your own. How do I say it without just being, I'm just going to have to say it, I guess. But out of your own feelings. Many times our prayers are what we feel and not what we are led to pray. Amen. I've wanted to pray some prayers like that before. Don't get me wrong. Amen. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I pray. I've thought about it. I'll tell you a prayer that really always amazed me was people pray, Lord, <laughs> Lord, do something to them. <laughs> Mate, wake them up, God. <laughs> I'm like, Really? We want to pray evil on them? Why, why don't we? Sometimes. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. But watch this. We should, we should go. We should go and pray. Lord, 
Awake them in their spirit that they may see the truth. God, give them vision. Give them dreams. Give them understanding, God. Give them a revelation of what eternity looks like. I don't care, but don't pray anything evil that may harm them. Amen? Amen. That's a curse come out of your mouth. That's not a blessing. Amen. The Bible says blessing and cursing shouldn't proceed out of the same mouth. If we're believers, we should be blessing and blessing and blessing and blessing and blessing. But no curses like to slip out every now and then. And I'm not talking about curse words. I'm talking about cursing. In fact, of talking somebody down or talking bad about somebody or putting somebody down over this one or that one and comparing and doing all that junk that's not of God. Come on, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to be lifting up our brother and sister. We need to be building up the body. We need to be strengthening one another, not pushing down on each other, but strengthening each other. Amen. amen. A prayer of supplication is making those requests known. Make those requests known. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Do you know we are the righteous of Christ? I've been teaching on Wednesday night. People say this all the time, and I kind of I kind of messed up this little wording, but it, it, this little wording says I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm not a sinner saved by grace. I was a sinner, and I am saved by grace. I was a sinner and I am saved by grace because the Bible says I am the righteousness of Christ. He didn't say I was a sinner of Christ. He said I'm the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his. His. And what is his right? It's who we are in Christ. Amen. And all these things shall be added to you. You're not a sinner saved by grace. You were a sinner and you are saved by grace and you are the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 34. Let me try to get here. I'm trying to get to it. And he said, therefore, do not worry about. This is a big one right here, ain't it? Isn't this a big one? I said, ain't it? That's our comment. Therefore, do not worry about. How many know about this tomorrow? How many know what I'm talking about? How many worry about tomorrow? Yes. Tomorrow's Monday. Tomorrow's another day starting off your week. Some start your week today. But we always worry about tomorrow. We know what tomorrow may bring. You don't know what tomorrow may bring. You have no idea what tomorrow may bring. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I want to I want to tell you, we can bring so much on ourselves that we sit around and just worry. The Bible said, "Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Quit looking at tomorrow." You, you know, tomorrow will bring its own stuff. But today I need, to, I need to praise, I need to celebrate, and I need to give Jesus all of the attention. And I need to trust him with all the requests I've made to him. Amen? Amen? Heavenly Father who loves us. Do you understand how much God loves you? Do you understand this? There's a lot of people that's had earthly dad that wasn't worth the flip. I'll just say it. There are people, there are, there are, there are families today there are kids out there that can't understand how a heavenly father can love them because their earthly father was just horrible. That's a good word. I was trying to find a good word. Absent from them and, and just wasn't there to love them and care about them and give them the attention. But the father who loves us, heavenly father, listen to me, heavenly father who loves us, the heavenly father who loves us, he loves us so much. He cares for you. He's able to help and support you. Why do we worry and be anxious? If we know that a Heavenly Father is there to love us, care for us, provide for us, support us, give us help, why do we worry? Why do we become anxious? It is because we allow this life to overtake us and we forget who God is. The Bible says in everything by prayer and supplication, Paul pushed it out. He said, our great needs, we need to take all these things without exception to God in prayer. I mean, remember the song, take, take it all to God in prayer. I mean, we used to, there used to be an old song, take everything to God in prayer. We need to go back. Let's go back. And think about these things that we used to sing about, that we used to talk about. Let's take everything to God in prayer. You know what we do? We take what we think we can't handle to God and we keep the rest. 
That's not, that's not a believer. That's not the way it works. You are to take everything to God in prayer. Amen? Amen. And when you take it to him in prayer, it is to trust him. As soon as we have a need or a problem, we are to take it to the Lord in prayer. Just like if you sin and you fail, it ain't you sit around, well, I sinned. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to give up now. No, you repent and you get up and you shake it off and you walk forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You, you forget about it. You let it go. Why is it that we have such problems being in request and taking our needs to God? When I have a need and a problem, why well, think about it for a week? Why not just take it to him right then? I mean, when the bill comes in the mail and you open it up, oh, Lord, Jesus. God, here's my need. Y'all hear me? But you know what we do? We pull it back down and then we go, I don't know how I'm going to pay it. We've all been there. From the pulpit to the back chairs. We've all been there. We've opened them. But what we're supposed to do and what we do sometimes is two different things. What the Bible teaches us is we're to take that need right then, that, that situation, to God in prayer. Are you all with me? Amen. We are to present our supplication, our request, our petitions to the Lord with trust. Relying on Him, assuring and giving us provision in time of need. <laughs> the Word of God teaches, and I'm about, I'm about completed here, so don't think I've got another too long to go. I'm, I'm right at done. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care upon him. For he does what? He cares for you. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Do you understand what grace is? Grace is undeserved favor. Undeserved favor is the definition of grace. And grace, he said, find grace undeserved favor for help in time of need. I don't know about you, but I could use some undeserved favor right now. Come on, amen. amen. Is anybody in the building can use some undeserved favor in this place? Amen? amen. Hallelujah. He said, but there's one part that we forget about. And there's one thing we taught our kids. If somebody gives you something, you say thank you. And I've taught on thankfulness before. And I've taught on this just a little bit before. But it's something I want to remind you with supplication. The Bible teaches in Philippians back there. He said, do not be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. He tell us, don't forget to say thank you. Because the thing is, is it is the right thing to do. It is the right attitude to have. Thankfulness is an attitude. Amen. Thankfulness is who you are. There are people that get things and are never thankful for it. Never thankful for it. You could give them whatever, and they still wouldn't be thankful for it. I call, I call them just, that, that, that's, the, that's the society we live, that nobody can ever get enough. Listen to me. Young people, middle-aged, adults, it don't matter. We all been here. We can't get enough of this world. I'm going to ask you to change your thoughts and say, God, I want more of you. I can't get enough of you, God. If we would seek after God like we seek after this world, my, 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 what would the church look like? Amen? What, what, where would we be spiritually? Where would we be with God? Where would our prayer life be? Where would our worship be? Where would our praise be? It would be off the chart with God because it ain't about me. It ain't about this world. It ain't about the things I can gain in this life. The Bible says I can gain the whole world and lose my own soul. Prayer and supplication should always be, be followed by thanksgiving. It is, a, it is the most, one of the most important parts. The Bible says also in Colossians 4, 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. No matter what your prayer is, make sure you got thanksgiving in it. Come on, amen. amen. If it's a prayer of faith, Lord, I believe, I believe, and I thank you for it right now. Amen. amen. If it's a power of agreement, God, we agree, we agree, and Lord, I thank you for it. If it's a request, God, I have this specific need. I need God. This is a need in my life. Bring it to God. Don't be anxious for it. Just let God work and let God answer. Come on, amen. amen. The attitude we are to have when presenting our supplications to the Lord is one that is very thankful, trusting him for that answer. 
The, the one big thing that we, we find in this is when we're waiting for God, it, we, we find ourselves not in peace of God. If you look at Philippians, the last part of it, in that last verse as I read, he said, in the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. You know what we need to happen? We need to get our understanding out of the way and we need to let peace come in. Because peace of God is the only thing that will overcome the understanding. He also said not only will he give you understanding with peace, but he will guard your heart and your mind and your mind through Christ Jesus. How many know we need our, our mind guarded sometimes? Amen. All the time. Somebody say all the time. Amen. All the time. God will give us peace beyond understanding that will guard our hearts and mind as we endure to stand firm in the Lord. Prayer has the power that we far too often forget about. Do you understand how powerful prayer is? Amen. The reason I'm talking about getting back is because prayer is powerful. Amen? Amen. Prayer has power that we often forget. This past week we talked about power of agreement, prayer and agreement. But there's one thing I, I, I want you to do is today I want you to think about Bring all your needs to the Lord. Bring all your needs. Not some, not one, not two, but all. Bring all your needs to God. Bring your petition to God. Many of us, you know, the world today want to pick at everything. They want a sign for everything. The Bible says signs and wonders shall follow believers. There's your sign, baby. The key is, is we need to be believers. That signs and wonders are following, not believers holding signs. Holding a sign never changed anybody. But a sign that was revelation changed everybody. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid this morning to give your petition to God. Because fear, God hadn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I promise you today, God can handle it. <laughs> I've seen him handle it. I've seen God deal with it. I've seen God take care of it. I pray this week that you will have a thankful heart, knowing that whatever the outcome of the situation that you're praying about, if God answers it today or he answers it next week, or if he answers it next month, I'm going to praise him anyway. Amen? Amen? God is in full control. Have we given it to him? Have we given it all to God? Or are we giving him a little bit and we're hanging on to a little bit? This ain't a 50-50 deal. God said, bring it all. Cast all your care on me. He didn't say, bring some. He said, bring all. You say, man, pastor, that's a lot of stuff. I say, good, go ahead, bring it. God can handle it, amen? amen. Let's be the church that makes our requests known to God. You know, the Bible never told me to make my request to you. He said, make my request to God. My prayer request may be a very important need. It may be something that you wouldn't want to talk about. That's the kind of request that God wants to hear. That's the petition God wants. We need to make our request known to God, not just in the good times. Hello? We need to make some in the bad. There's, hey, we all have life. Life happens, right? But the good thing is when bad comes, God's going to take over and good's going to show up. Amen? So go ahead today. Ask yourself right now, what is my petition? What is my request? I've taken it to God, but have I hung on to it? Ask yourself that. Have I hung on to it? Or have I given it all to God? And this morning, I'm going to help you out. Everybody stand with me. I'm going to help you out one step. That's all I can do. But I want you to do something. Every one of us in here have something, something, something in our life that's not right with God. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? We all, we just, what did you say? I'm saying that all of us in here have offered a prayer to God. And we have doubted in the fact he would ever answer it. Many of us in here have said a prayer, probably even this past week. And when you prayed it, you prayed it because 
someone asked you maybe to pray it or maybe you prayed it and in the back of your mind you said I don't know how God's ever going to do that you doubted in that moment you erased your petition instead of saying God how say God I know you will instead of saying God when say God I thank you when you're going to amen God I thank you the right timing I, the right timing is coming amen let me tell you something. It may not be in my time, but God don't have a time clock. God works in His way, in His hour, in His moment. Amen? Amen. And I want to encourage you today. Faith doesn't say, Lord, can you? Lord, will you? But faith says, thank you. Amen. When you ask God for this request and petitions today, don't say when, how, or when. Or, or anything about it. Just say thank you. Just say thank you. We've read this scripture a hundred times. Mark eleven twenty four. All things for which you pray and ask. Believe you have received them. This morning. A little different altar time. But I want you today. I, I usually have you stand. I usually have you come and stand. But we're going to. We're going to step into a new place today. If you can. If you're able you can't, I understand, then stand. But I want you to come. I want you to find a place to kneel. If you can, if you're able to kneel, uh, and if we have to line up down the middle aisle, everybody in here, if you will please stay very reverent to this moment. Just just kind of, you know, keep the talking down, keep the movement around down, and let's, let's respect those at the altar today. Let's come forward right now. Come on, y'all. Let's come before to God today. Make these requests known to him today. Make these requests known today. There's some important things taking place up here today. There's some petitions being made known to God. Not me, not anybody else, but to God. To God. To God. These petitions are being made to God. I'm bringing this request to you. Once you make that petition, once you make that petition, give him your list. Give him your list. Give him your list today. And after you do, believe it. Believe it by faith. And begin to thank him for it. You're going to see something begin to take place in your spirit as you begin to say thank you. You're going to find some victory showing up in your, in your life as you begin to say thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, make that petition known today. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and sing. Go ahead in this place. Go ahead, God. This is between you and God. If you're still out there right now and you need to come, come right now. Kneel before God today. Bow before Him today. If you can't bow, come and stand before Him today. Come and stand before Him today. Father, we thank you right now, Jesus. Every petition, God, is being made to you now. Every petition, God, we make it to you today, God.
I may be thankful right now. Come on, amen. Come on and give God some praise in this place. Give me some thanksgiving, hallelujah. Give me some thanksgiving this morning, hallelujah. Yeah. Sarah, if you step right there. Go come help me real quick. Her uh, sister's having a heart procedure done in the morning, and she wants to stand in for her. So let's all stretch our hand this way right now. Come on. Father, right now, we speak over her, God. We speak over her sister right now, God, as she goes in. Lord, as she stands in the gap for her, God, we just receive right now. We receive your hand upon her. We receive that promise right now. God, everything will be all right. <laughs> everything going to be all right. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for it right now. We just thank you for it right now, Jesus. We just thank you for it, God. We give you praise for it right now, Lord. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that promise right now, Lord. Thank you for that promise right now. Thank you for that promise right now, Jesus. Thank you for taking your hand and, and taking her through this, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God's just amazing, isn't he? Amen. amen. I said God's just amazing, isn't he? Amen. amen. So, two things before we get out of here today. Number one, men, stronger men's conference. Woo! Dean, stronger men's conference. <laughs> Dean, I was given this last night. I forgot to tell you this morning. But uh, if anybody, we have a ticket, we have a ticket that someone wants to pick it up and purchase it, uh, we, can, we, can do the, we can do the early price because it was one of the early price deals. And so we have one ticket available. If you're one of the men here in the church, no matter who you are, if you want to go, come see D after or me after and let us get you on the list. I got one ticket. So if you go to D and come to me, two people go opposite places. So go just to D. How about that? Let me fix that. So? So? So. so amen. So we got uh, got that taken care of. The Stronger Men's Conference, there is a hotel expense that's waiting. Uh, and I think that's 65 a person in that, right? That's You can pay it online. It says Stronger Men's Conference on there. Also, the $65 covers your hotel stay and also gives you breakfast the next morning. All that good stuff comes with it. So it's a full, full deal. Secondly, we got a deadline next Sunday. If you signed up for camping, this is very important because last year I booked a lot of spots and we had a lot of people not show up. So I need you to pay your $12. If you're going, if you say I'm going and you sign up this with Brad, I need you to pay $12. That's it, $12. Just to $12. That's for the spot. That's confirming your spot. Okay, that's that's saying I got a, a place to either put my trailer or my tent. $12. We need that by next Sunday so I can make the call next Monday and reserve all the space. If not, it books up fast down there. And I, I, I'm, I'm just believing it's all still going to be available when I call Monday, okay? We put it out to April the 21st. So next Sunday, if you, could, if you can get that to us, just get it to Brad or myself or pay online. Either way, we'll get it and uh, get that taken care of. So it's just it's just, uh, it's for me to be able to make sure we get enough places. And if, if you don't, if you decide, well, I don't know if I'm going, then you're taking a chance on not having a spot with the group, all right? That's all I'm saying. I, 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 I hate to be like that, but I got to be like that, amen? I got to be like that to a degree because I got to know what we're doing. I, I'll probably get a couple extra spots, to be honest with you, but I don't want to take that chance either that you don't get a spot with us, amen? So get that in, $12 by next Sunday. And that's all I'm going to talk about money, all right? BBS.
How many excited about BBS? Sarah, where do you want them? Right here. If you're going to help with BBS, if you, you say, well, I can't be at BBS. Well, maybe you can do something on the outside. Maybe you help make copies. You only have to be here during BBS. But Sarah needs your help. So come right up here. If you're going to be part of BBS this year, God bless you today. Have a great day. Give